Hello and welcome to this uh, Chinny rant here on Chinny Vision 2, one where I haven't got the camera very set up very well, but um, we will go with it anyway. Yeah, it's a bit blurry. Never mind, because I've got five minutes here and I want to have a chat about something. Warning, it might take more than five minutes. It's a subject we've uh, talked about before here on Chinny Vision. It's uh, the cost of buying computers uh, and things for our hobby. And there's just a couple of things I've seen in the past week. One item that was peripheral and uh, also someone posting online they'd bought a computer on Buy It Now, as is their right to do that. Um, I've done that before, um, and that's fine, but it, it's it's the cost of things, really, and, and how we're encouraging people to, well, to kind of continually push up prices. I've often told, and, and this isn't showing off, this is just a statement of fact, that I bought a Dreamcast in 2002 for £15, and it came with uh, five, six, seven games, a couple of controllers and boxed and everything. And that was effectively a, not a new games console at the time, but um, one that was clearly just out of fashion that no one wanted. So you could buy that. And looking back at my auction history, I was buying quite a few other things at that time for not a lot of money. Um, even hmm, must have been 10 years ago, Something like that, eight, ten years ago, I I thought my C64 was broken, and the cheapest way back then wasn't to get it repaired, but actually I thought I'd get a hold of a spare, um, therefore I have a spare power supply, a spare computer, and a spare data set, and I'll be able to work out what's wrong. And I got a C64 with about 50 games, and everything included, all boxed, for £50, um, which I thought was quite a lot of money then. But it had everything, therefore, you know, and it matched my unit. So I thought, you know, that was worth it. But we're now beginning to see not just silly prices, but insane prices. Computers that really aren't worth it heading towards £200. Because of the way the market is, there's this weird thing at the moment. People are seemingly... Well, there's, it's it's a story of two halves. There are people who haven't had jobs during the pandemic, the event, who haven't got money, not been able to spend on things, although also haven't been going out as well, so not spending as much, but also people who have got money, kept their jobs, who haven't been going on exotic holidays and, and doing things out and having what they call experiences. Um, whatever an experience is. That's a phrase Mrs. Chinney used to me um, when I was telling her about this earlier. They aren't going out, so they're they're buying things instead of indulging themselves on their hobby, uh, which may be old computers. And therefore, they're going on eBay and buying stuff up. And the cost of things has just kind of jumped significantly at a time when I thought things might have started to settle down. Um, and I pity anyone getting into this hobby at the moment who doesn't have deep pockets because you're going to be paying a lot of money for computers. It's... I just start to look at some of this stuff. Amigas, insane. If I didn't own my own Amiga 1200 that's not mine, that I've had since 1992, um... Where's my phone? Let's have a look at what... Oh, that's hasn't gone on the floor. Let's go on to the evil eBay. I'll oh, type in Amiga 1200. If I can spell Amiga, which instead the person who I bought my Amiga 600 off couldn't, so that's a tip for eBay. Okay, we've got a boxed Amiga 500 bidding... Um, very nice set, although it's an SCOM set, so I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. But, um, you know, it's a 359.95 all in, £15 postage. 
It's a nice set. As a buyer, now actually not the most insane I've seen. Um, we've got pre-owned Amiga 1200 with two days, three days to go effectively, at £240. £240. It does have some kind of accelerator and memory expansion in it. Um, pre-owned Amiga 500, gone online, seven days to go. Starting price, 400 Another SCOM. I mean, who's... I wouldn't touch an SCOM Amiga with a barge pole. That's a buying tip from me. Uh, unless it's had all the floppy disk problems and all the other stuff fixed. I don't want a proper Commodore one. And incidentally, watch these, watch these people because they will list them as Commodore Amigas. And of course, they're not. They're SCOM Amigas. We've got a black Amiga 1200. Who wants a black Amiga 1200? 960 pounds. Grey Amiga 1200. We've got Blizzard card 920. They've just put these crappy new cases on them. It's nuts. Amiga 1200 pre-owned 575. Amiga 500 plus 255. I bought a cartoon classic pack like that um, at a village fate down the road from here. I bought it for a fiver. I think I sold it on for 50 or 55 pounds. Again, about... 10 years ago. Um, I decided I kept it for a while then decided I wasn't going to keep it. And I, th I think I spent the money, used that money on that C64 actually because uh, it was using up the space that I was using to store that. So, you know, that's just, ju that's just a little example. It's insane. And it's still going up and people are still getting fines and stuff but I, I, in terms of stuff on local Facebook. But it's just got to the point where I'm thinking, goodness me, this is this is insane. This isn't a hobby that I could get into if I didn't already have most of this stuff. The only expensive and exotic stuff I've bought in the past few years has been uh, the Aquan Archimedes and uh, my MSX machines from the Netherlands, which in the grand scheme of things weren't that expensive. And... Some of the people buying this stuff have the hobbies or... You know, I've, I've got a YouTube channel which funds Chinevision to make a huge amount of money, but it makes a little bit of money, which I, I can buy things for the channel for. And I'm always, I've bought a parallel port sound card. So you guys don't have to listen to beeper noises when I do PC games. Um, but that, again, it's just... People have got to hand build these things. That's still um, £60, which I'm not complaining about because that seems like a reasonable price for a parallel port card. But this isn't the cheap hobby that it used to be. Um, if prices are going up because components have gone up as well because of the pandemic and having to buy um, people having to buy stuff in. I, I get that. That's understandable. If people are hand building stuff. That's not a cheap thing to do either but also you've got this thing where it's the price of the hardware on ebay and the value of it i think pushes up the cost of peripherals because i think there's probably a case that says actually if people are spending this money amount of money on an amiga on a games console on a spectrum, what have you, quite rightly, the people making peripherals turn around and go, you know what, if you're spending two, three hundred pounds on a computer, you can probably afford an extra 10 or 20 pounds on your peripherals. Which again, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people are, aren't doing this as hobbies, they're in business. Businesses are full time businesses, but it's this creep, it's this slow pushing up of prices that will put people off coming into the hobby, um, put people who aren't, don't have deep pockets. Um, you know, I don't have them. I see people, and it's perfectly, they're perfectly entitled to do this, doing things like going to Japanese eBay and spend, happily spending £400 on getting an MSX24, possibly £500 by the time you've shipped it and, and done all the rest of it. I'd love to do that stuff for the channel. 
but there's no way I could justify that, even if I had the funds and funds available. Because I just, I just think you're getting to the point of that's just, it's not obscene. Well, no, it kind of is because it's so much money for something that I for so long was absolutely worthless. And actually as well, you get that stuff over here. Yes, you're paying that money on Japanese Yahoo auctions, eBay, whatever. But then you've got to get rid of that thing afterwards at some point when you get it over here. That, that exotic NEC PC, that you know, gorgeous, gorgeous Sony hit bits I'd so love to have and feature on the channel, but I cannot remotely justify getting when there's other stuff to that makes more of a difference day to day to the channel, like PC sound cards uh, and so on. Um, and that's not to um, criticise people who do that, because if you've got that disposable income to go on there and this is your hobby and your love, then... Yes, I'm not so concerned about those kind of auctions there because that's a bit more niche. But people spending money, so much money, on bog stands and Amiga 1200s. STs, the price has gone up hugely. You couldn't give STs away a few years ago. I'm really lucky. Both STs I've got for Tunivision were donated to the channel because if I didn't have Tunivision, there's no way... None. I'd own an ST. Why would I own an ST? I've got an Amiga. And that's not being facetious. That is like, I can't see any reason there is to actually own an ST unless you want to play Carrier Command a bit faster. Um, and I can't, there's no games or anything like that, or the aesthetic of it. It's it's cheap, tramiel era plastics. It doesn't look great. It's just a big lump of plastic thrown together because Atari lost the chance to have the Amiga as their own machine. And, oh, I'm going to be losing the ST owners now, aren't I? But it's one of those machines I can't see. And yet people are fighting over these things. Falcons, I can understand because they're special hardware-wise. They're still the same crap ST look. It's like, here's a really expensive, futuristic 32-bit machine. It looks the same as the Atari ST from six or seven years before, which didn't even look great at the time. Um, I don't know. What can we do about this, though? Well, we cannot encourage buy it nails on eBay. Certainly, well, let me qualify that. We cannot encourage buy it nails at unreasonable prices on eBay because somebody's got very deep pockets and can do it. Even if you have got deep pockets... Think about what you're doing when you click on that £300 computer that you could probably pick up for half that if you had some patience. Um, just think about, yeah, you get your instant gratification, but you're just giving everyone else a kick in the balls because you're just pushing up the prices for everyone else. So just just think about what you're doing. If you Okay, if you've got to be gratified, if you've got to jump in and buy that computer at £300, £400 because you can afford it, then it's a free market. But, you know, I why not go on Amibay and buy it on there? Why not just have some patience on the auctions? I, when was the last time I bought something by now? The Atari 130 XE, when I got that. I bought that, and it wasn't unreasonable. It wasn't silly. It was more than... I would have wanted to pay on auction, but not by much. Perhaps I'm part of the problem. But I couldn't find one on Ami Bay. That nothing listed on there. There was nothing uh, on, coming up on eBay week after week, and kind of like mm, I want these games and get these get this stuff running. I probably want that Atari. So yeah, I jumped in, but it it really wasn't an unreasonable thing. Whereas I think spending. Okay, not allowing for inflation, but spending more on an Amiga than it cost originally, not allowing for inflation, is probably a bit... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the answers are here. And I am wittering on a bit now, and perhaps you can put the answers in the comments. Perhaps you're someone who does go and buy it now. And 
you know, it takes it takes all sorts. It takes all sorts. It's I'm not saying I'm right. I am not saying I'm right at all. I'm just saying that how I how I feel lately, having looked on eBay and seen what people are buying, which they're entitled to buy, but there are it's no good going around saying I bought a rare oh I did this because it was a rare machine when you only ever looked on eBay and you didn't really look and in fact I can tell you that if you'd gone to a certain forum you could have probably bought that machine for uh, probably 30-40% less but you did buy it now on eBay ask ask there are brilliant people in this community. Ollie, who sold me my Sinclair uh, 48K Plus. That was very reasonably priced. He'd fully refurbed it. He's a collector. He watches Tinny Vision. I'm a collector. He knows I'm not going to flip that for more, for more money. Um, that machine's getting used on Tinny Vision. You can see how much I like using it because although my Plus 2 is my main Tinny Vision Spectrum because of the RGB and it's easy to capture from, I'm putting in 48K plus footage so you can see the dot crawl, so you can see that output, so you can see a bit closer to what it would have looked like on UHF. You know, it would have been worse on UHF, obviously, but you can see it closer and you can see I'm using that. So it's a genuine enthusiast thing. And if you're an enthusiast, then what I'm going to leave you with is just think about where you're buying from, how much you're spending, and if you can obtain those machines that you want and you want now from other enthusiasts who are willing to sell that to you rather than some bloke on eBay who's bought these machines has rubbed a wet cloth over it and said that's refurbished and stuck it on for twice what it's worth. I don't know. That's uh, that's a freeform thought um, thing. I. If you've got comments, put them in the thing below. I'm not having a go at anyone in particular. It's just things I've seen over the last few weeks. That I'm, I'm, my, this is my brain speaking. Thanks for watching. I am going to win this now. Check out Chini Vision 1. Hate is the video this week. Um, and, uh, oh, I don't know. I've, I've, there's lots of exciting things coming up on Chini Vision soon. Um, big, uh, UN Squadron probably this Thursday. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching. And uh, thanks to everyone who supports on Patreon and enables all this. And if you survive this long, all 18 minutes of it, well, well done. Cheers. Give you a thumb. I'll give you a thumbs up there. Cheers. See ya.